Good morning, Anna. I've been getting asked a lot of questions about Didge. Where's Didge? Honestly, Didge likes to run around a lot more. She's sleeping in the garage right now, but she likes to run around and chase the birds. Anna just kind of hangs out with the humans. That's her thing. Number one this morning, I got to get this truck in the shop. It's still got that fuel issue. Uh, we got Allstate Peterbilt coming out to take a look at it, so I'm going to get this in the shop. I didn't put it in the shop last night because it got down to 20 degrees, so I wanted the sprayer in the shop. Didn't want to have problems with that because we haven't had it winterized. We just leave it in the heated shop all year. <laughs> Nice and warm in here. I had the heat cranked up all night. Now I gotta run in for an hour here because I actually have to interview Tom Vilsack for our Fieldwork podcast. So Mitchell Hora and I doing the Fieldwork podcast where we concentrate on sustainable farming practices, things like no-till and cover crops and how you can incorporate that into your operation where Mitchell has a long history of those kinds of things and actually runs a soil health consulting business where I'm the opposite. We are full conventional till looking at potentially hopefully getting into other practices and uh, we get to talk to Tom Vilsack this morning and ask him what the new administration is going to be doing looking forward into the future as far as what pertains to farming and ag management practices and as you can hear I'm still stuffed up so hopefully old Tom doesn't have an issue with that see guys Didge is just fine she's just taking a nap on her blankets Anna would like to get her up and riled up but she's good are there any ways that you see the USDA having a big role in, in playing when it comes to the carbon markets and how do we help to establish standards that will maybe facilitate a marketplace or what does that look like to you? Just a quick interview with the current active United States Secretary of Agriculture. No biggie. You look pretty confident in what you're doing. Huh? Well, you're not going to wreck my planter, right? No, no, no way, Zach. <laughs> Gear wrench, new hoodie. There. Had to fix my new sweatshirt. <laughs> First. Getting everything off. You come to play basketball? 
You want to lift the next uh, row cleaner off? Sure. They're pretty heavy. Okay. So we've got all the air lines, the supply lines, the vacuum lines taken off. We've got the hex shaft off. Everything is getting converted to electric drive and hydraulic downforce, so we don't need any of that stuff anymore. It's gonna be a much simpler system with a lot less stuff hanging on the row units. We're just lifting the main row units off. We're gonna reuse the row cleaners so we don't need those off. But I'm gonna get the camper out of the way so we got somewhere to pile this stuff. That'll be better. The guys from Midwest Machinery took off. They came out and helped us get a real good start on things. Jim's headed home to grab some lunch now that it's well after two o'clock. Give him a break, go grab some lunch. I'm gonna grab some lunch myself because I'm starting to wither away, obviously. And then he'll be back out here in an hour and we'll continue. 30 minutes later. Just to recap what we've been doing here because it got a little busy with those other guys there from Midwest Machinery helping us get a start, but basically, we took off the vacuum lines that ran down to the row units. These will get used again. We took off the air lines, the supply lines. This is what brings the seed from the center of the planter out to right here to the row unit here. So we unhook that, that will get used again as well. We unhook the air line from the Yetter shark tooth row cleaners that we've been running. Those are gonna stay. Uh, next thing we did was actually take all those off. You can see them laying on the floor up there. We took those off the row units uh, Jim and Eric worked on some hydraulic hoses that come off and some electrical harnesses and stuff and uh, Colin and I helped lift some of the row units off or he helped me lift some of them off We got the bottom bolts loose here all the airlines that go to these pneumatic bags for downforce Those are coming off those go right with the row units because we're gonna now have a hydraulic Cylinder in there that actually changes that uh, down pressure on the go so we don't need the airlines that were up here anymore. Uh, we didn't need that hex shaft drive running through there because these row units are all gonna be electric drive now. So they'll kick in and out using a solenoid instead of that shaft drive and that clutch system. So what Jim and I have left here is to get the second half of the row units off. Those will all lift off there. We gotta get that compressor off there. You saw we lifted the uh, Yetter row cleaner compressor off and there is a little compressor way up on the front of the hitch there that we will take off as well because I believe the new system incorporates it all into one compressor that will mount into the back there. So we've got to lift those off, lift those off. We've got some uh, control boxes here that come off. There's one on each side. Those can be removed. There will be some more electrical wiring that comes off, but I'm gonna wait and see until deer gets here to make sure I'm not pulling off stuff that I shouldn't because it's gonna be faster to just pull it off then than it is to pull it off now and have to put it back on in case we do. That's enough talking. Who let you in? Hmm? Was it you? Yep. Yep. How was lunch, Jim? 
How was lunch? It was wonderful. Good. Now we can go to be heck. <laughs> it should stand up straight. Okay. Uh oh. So six of these row units have a different mounting bracket to them that doesn't come with the kit. They've got to stay with the 24 row frame here because of the way the frame is built at some of the pivot points and two in the rear. We've got to get those off of six of these. Well, that's the last one. Now what? We'll get that tank out of there, under there. That's what I was thinking. Hook a strap to it, or should I? Should we try and just slide it onto the forks from underneath? I'm getting sick of sitting in that skid loader. <laughs> Where are you? Where are you, Tim? All right, Chico. You coming? Yeah, go. Ready? Yep. And the third and final compressor. One. It looks like uh, these two hoses in that wire connector. There's one, that was easy. Might need, oh, there's one. There we go. I don't think that one's too heavy. Oh yeah. That's the light. Now we remove the brains. You remember where all those plugs go, Jim? Sure. Yep. Shouldn't be an issue. No problem. Because yeah. we'll be running completely different row units, running different downforce, different closing wheels, electric drive, everything is different. All the brains, which there are several of them on this outfit, come off and get replaced with better brains. Yeah, there's a box over there too. Well, that black box? It's, yeah. The, the black one and then the one in front of it. The black one might stay. Cause that one's actually for the row cleaners. One brain. That's what it looks like, so we'll take that black one out anyway. Pull, I suppose pull these two, and I then that's the only see what we can on. get at. Yeah, because if that black one comes out of the way, then we can get at the, at the other one pretty At the easy. one up here, yeah. I think this will, well that pretty well loosened up everything, oh, didn't that, it? Yes, it did. So we might get everything off with just these two longer bolts. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that. Yeah, there's a bit of a wire issue in the back here holding it in that I can't pull out any farther. We decided to leave the main brain hooked up there because there's a very large, about two inch wiring harness that sp splits off a hundred different directions. 
we're gonna leave that until the deer guys get here in a few days to look at that and make sure we're doing the right thing. So that's kind of just hanging there. Jim left us. Now what, Onyx? You wanna play basketball? Play basketball? Yeah. Yeah, we can do that. Are you going gopher trapping? Yeah. Gophers are out. Almost. You can make one from back here. Back there. <laughs> I can't believe you made that. Ready? <laughs> Close. So we ordered 90% of our chemicals online last year. Got them all through Farmers Business Network. They worked well, we loved the convenience of it. So now we've got another delivery here for the 2021 chemicals, which we ordered quite a while back. One of the cool parts about these chemicals is that before I order them online, I can go on there and see an exact apples to apples comparison on the concentration, and I can see exactly what others are paying for the same active ingredients. Membership is now completely free, by the way. All you gotta do is go to FBN.com and sign up. FBN is also an American company, and they have local and regional representatives and people that work for them all over the country. I've got a local rep, FBN Todd. You've seen him in the videos before. He still owes me lunch, by the way. Well, that was easy. <laughs>